On the 9th of June 2015, at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris, the Michalisberg region was proclaimed an international biosphere reserve. It's an area of about 360,000 hectares between Pretoria and Rustenburg and then south towards Krugersdorp, including the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site. The declaration was a proud moment for South Africa. It was also a great accomplishment for the Gauteng and the Northwest governments. They had obtained endorsement from local municipalities and the Northwest had set up a steering committee for the project. They had also commissioned a well-qualified consultant, Billy Bunzaya, to compile the application documents. The greatest triumph of the day belonged to the Michalisberg Biosphere Initiative Group, a small voluntary committee who had initiated and persevered with the project for almost a decade. But for all this excitement, few people actually know what a biosphere reserve is. The biosphere is a technical term for the outer surface of the Earth where all life exists. It's made up of the lithosphere, that's all the landforms and terrestrial life, the hydrosphere, the water in the oceans and the rivers and lakes on which all life depends, and the atmosphere, the gas bubble in which we live and breathe. All the deep space probes and Hubble telescopes have not found a single living organism anywhere else in the entire universe. Not only is this the only place where life exists, it's the only place where we find all of the natural resources necessary for life. And in the 1970s, scientists began to realize that we are consuming those natural resources faster than they can renew themselves. In other words, we are demolishing the only place where we are able to survive. In response to these warnings, UNESCO established the Man and the Biosphere program and the international network of what they called biosphere reserves. These are places where people try to find ways of living successful social and economic lives while at the same time protecting vital ecosystems and renewable natural resources. Those two principles lie at the core of the UNESCO Man and the Biosphere philosophy and that is the true meaning of the word sustainability. But sustainability is exactly what we haven't achieved in the past. So how do we expect to do so in a biosphere reserve? There aren't any special laws protecting biospheres. So we depend on the third critically important principle, research, education and the exchange of information. We need to understand how our ecosystems work, what species occur in which habitats, and what are the human needs in our biosphere? The culture and the heritage of communities who live or have lived in the region. Then, having researched that information, we need to disseminate it through education and awareness projects, through publications. And an absolute imperative for biosphere success is the international network of more than 600 other biospheres around the world because they constantly learn from each other, sharing information on successful and some unsuccessful projects. UNESCO refers to them as living laboratories. Every biosphere reserve is made up of three zones, one or more core zones that are legally protected, like nature reserves, and then there is a surrounding buffer where people live and work, and it's here that the biosphere philosophy of sustainability is really put into practice and transitional zones where any economic activity can take place provided it doesn't adversely impact on the buffer or the core. In the Michalisberg, the core areas are the Michalisberg Protected Environment and the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site. They are both protected by Acts of Parliament. The buffer areas in the Michalisberg are made up of conservancies. These are voluntary associations of neighbouring landowners who subscribe to a common sustainable philosophy. So, with the exception of nature reserves in the core, the biosphere reserve doesn't have a fence around it to keep animals in or people out. This is a revolutionary new way to protect a very special area by getting people and nature to exist in harmony. More than 40 years ago, the Mountain Club of South Africa 
who are keen visitors and protectors of the Michalisberg, set out to protect the three great assets of the region, its landscape, the wildlife and its heritage. Supported by the well-known journalist James Clark, they began a campaign that resulted in the legal protection of the Michalisberg in 1977. And then it took another 17 years after that to finalise the boundaries. Then, in 1994, the region was split between two provinces, the Northwest and Gauteng. The Cradle of Humankind was declared a World Heritage Site in 1999, but the Michalisberg Range was still a victim of illegal development, bureaucratic neglect and corruption. And so the Biosphere Movement was initiated in 2006 by a small group of enthusiasts under the auspices of the Michalisberg Protection Association. And it was supported by the Mountain Club and the Wildlife and Environment Society. For almost a decade, they created awareness and internet infrastructure and they recruited members. They helped define the boundaries and the management plans for the region. And they raised funds and recruited members. Most of all, they lobbied and motivated government support. And after the biosphere had been proclaimed, they helped to elect an independent, non-profit management board. But a biosphere reserve is not only about officialdom and authority. It's about ordinary people being proud of the incredible landscape we live in. It's about combining environmental awareness and education, initiating environmental awareness projects, and creating opportunities for economic growth and employment. It's about sensible and sensitive town planning, placing ecotourism on an international platform, finding innovative ways to resolve conflict. It's about investing in scholarly research, conserving wildlife, publishing and sharing information, discovering and understanding the lessons of the past and being aware of the fragility of the present. And always proudly living and prospering, but within the limitations of renewable natural resources.